my name is Flossin Jaggi. I am in the corporate space. I am a HR thought leader. I've um, been for almost two decades. An interesting place to be in, but and I'm also a mother, of course. I have learned that nothing is static and that um, people's needs are very dynamic and therefore you keep learning every day, working on yourself, working, helping others also to just discover themselves. And um, there's no underrating anybody. Everybody has something to offer. And, and it's just about, you know, helping them to package what it is that they have to offer because it's extremely useful and, and, and in dire need. The market needs it. When I got into the HR space, I was very fortunate that it was at a, t as a time that it was moving from personnel management that was uh, typically known as the hiring and firing office, you know, so you can imagine the connotations that that had and very revered. If one was called by HR, um, by the personnel manager, then they would shut up because then you, you either have a job or you don't. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're seeing that change uh, where it's more people centric where there's more empathy, there's more inclusion, um, there's more conversations that are, um, it, it's not a talk down, you know, a top down conversation, but it's actually um, very involving conversation where the employee gets uh, the space to speak and the employer listens, all right? Uh, so it's more relational. That, that is the one big change. The other big change is that the employee has also been empowered. Um, one, because of course of, of education, you know, it's opened up into that space. Of course, HR was very young then and it's been um, growing. So there's growing interest by the employee to understand the law, to understand their part of the expectation of the employer, the part of the bargain or what they bring to the employment space. And thirdly, of course, among others, is that we are seeing more diversity and inclusion. Um, where the marginalized, if you like, uh, groups are, you know, are more included um, in the workspace. And we are seeing deliberate efforts to actually ensure that the environment or the workspace is, is you know, tweak, tweaks in a way that it, it actually accommodates them to be able to, you know, to, to give their all. Yeah. Well, yes. Uh, oh, they say like a good wine. It gets better. <laughs> um, yes, this is what I know now. I think among many other items that I would say is that I know to listen better. I know to listen, not to respond, but to listen to understand. I know to have empathy and not to be quick to judge, not to be quick to crack the whip. Because, well, it comes with a job. You've got to crack the whip at some point uh, if it's absolutely necessary. I know better to impart knowledge and skills. Um, and I think that's a legacy that uh, any leader, you know, should live in the workspace. You know, look back and say, what, who have I impacted? Um, am I coming in empty, getting full, and also walking away empty, hopefully, if you can empty as much as possible. So trying to just transfer the knowledge and the skills to the younger people and and I know that better now and I keep and I keep learning I I think my favorite recipe remains uh, what I grew up on I think I'm still stuck there um anything african meals I'm totally sold out the specific one I don't know what we're going to call it here but let's for the sake of a conversation let's just call it matoke uh, but it's not just <laughs> bananas. I think they take the biggest chunk of, of the portion. But um, of course you have meats. My mom then, back then, could only afford matumbo, but we knew it as meat and we were happy with that. So you need your meat. You're going to boil it and put it aside. And then, of course, you chop off your onions and, and your, your onions and your, you know, your tomatoes, your carrots and the wax, the cajets, whatever you want to put in there. Mm -hmm. Once you fry that, you're going to put in the meat, you have your potatoes, your carrots, and then you have your bananas, and you would have boiled your, your yams, okay, if we can still find them, I think mostly in Meru, uh, yams and, um, and, and, and uh, uh, arrowroots, you know, and, and, and you just mix them, gather them, <laughs> you know, it's, and then if you have, if you want to have, a, a, you know, some sauce on the side, you could, but that's an option. Oh. 
that would be a real favor to your taste buds. I think as I grow older, I'm getting less and less uh, desire for anything that has milk. So it would be water, just as well, water is life. <laughs>